Welcome, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining Amber and I to talk through holiday peak shipping season. Uh, as we all know, it brings some unique challenges to the market, especially for businesses in the e-commerce and the food and beverage space. Uh, my name is Mike Beckwith. I'm our Vice President of Logistics Solutions here at Freight Plus. I've uh, personally been in the industry for about 10 years in both operations and sales focused roles. Uh, today, I have joining with me Amber Miller. Amber, do you mind uh, introducing yourself? Hi, Mike. Thank you. So I'm Amber Miller, Vice President of LTL here at Freight Plus. I've been in logistics industry for nearly 20 years, and I transitioned into LTL care development in 2009. I concentrated the majority of my career at LTL, helping companies optimize their freight strategies and then managing care relationships. Yeah, and uh, for a little bit of background about Freight Plus, uh, we've been in the industry for over 30 years, uh, focusing on client and customer transportation and logistics services. Uh, we're an industry provider of data-driven transportation management, offering businesses customized and tailored solutions. Uh, today, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to be speaking a little bit about holiday peak season. Uh, this webinar, we're looking to explore some of the sh how shippers can prepare for demand surges, uh, ensure smooth operations, and leverage data-driven forecasting. Uh, we're also going to speak a little bit about the difference between uh, full truckload and LTL as we navigate through peak holiday shipping season. Uh, and lastly, a little bit about proactive and risk management, especially in today's climate where fraud is running uh, rampant this year. Uh, so to start things off, we're going to talk a little bit about understanding demand fluctuations. You know, on the, on the full truckload side of the business, at least for me, uh, we see a lot of shippers start to prepare for peak season in August and September, uh, pushing out some forecasts on, on volumes and demand. Uh, really, it, October is when peak season starts for us as, as we start to see uh, preparations for holidays such as uh, Halloween. We already start seeing those commodities hitting retail stores. Uh, but then as we get later into peak season, we see surging for Amazon and e-commerce, uh, Black Friday sales, and, and even in that food and beverage space for uh, gatherings for uh, things like Thanksgiving and then Christmas. Um, so as we're understanding fluctuations uh, with, with demand, you know, Amber, on the LTL side, in your experience, uh, what has been the most significant drivers of demand surges in, in peak season? Yeah, it's kind of along the same lines as truckload. Um, we really start our planning in August and then ramp up in October. So some of the significant drivers, typically just the holiday shopping, especially from events, like you said, Black Friday, um, Cyber Monday, and everything that leads up to Christmas. And with the growth of online shopping, these surges have become even more dramatic. So promotions, last minute sales, and free shipping offers create sharp spikes in demand that require quick responses from our logistics team. On the food and beverage sector, seasonal holidays like Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's are major contributors on top of that. We have now have trends like buy local movements and the sale of meal, meal kits or specialty products increase the complexity of these surges. Yeah, and on the, uh, the, the truckload side, uh, we see varying lead time, um, you know, and that, that's how we prepare our teams is we look at what, what has short lead time, what has, you know, additional planned, I would say, demand that we can start to source capacity for, uh, you know, on the LTL side, are there any proactive strategies that you use or you found particularly effective in managing capacity during these times? Yeah, we're going to rely heavily on just historic data and demand forecasting. So by analyzing some of the trends from previous years, we can actually anticipate when and where the demand will spike and plan capacity accordingly. This includes working closely with our carriers to secure additional space in advance, especially on some of those critical lanes for our shippers. We also take a collaborative approach with our customers. We'll keep an open line of communication so we can better understand their upcoming needs and just ensure that we're aligned on inventory and delivery schedules. Absolutely. Uh, you know, to, to align on, on, on delivery schedules, for example, you know, for us in, 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 the, in the full truckload space, most oftentimes we're trying to meet a must arrive by date for a retailer or, um, you know, a food and beverage type shipper. You know, so what, what role does really visibility and lead time on transit data play to preventing delays and ensuring a smooth operation? Yeah, lead time transit data is just crucial for avoiding disruptions. With accurate real-time information on shipping progress, you can better plan for any potential delay. So for instance, if you have a lane that's experiencing a slower transit time due to high damage or maybe high demand or even congestion, uh, you can adjust your shipping schedule or even select alternative routes. 
Lead time visibility also helps with capacity planning. By predicting when bottlenecks might happen, you can secure extra capacity ahead of time, preventing those delays and just keeping your shipments on schedule. Yeah, and, and, and if we look at it from LTL versus full truckload, obviously they're very two very different service lines, right? You know, right. full truckload meaning origin to destination, straight dedicated routes, where LTL usually has to get cross docked over a, a few, if not several, terminals to the destination. Uh, so during peak seasons, as we look at really managing costs, uh, how do you determine when it's most cost effective to consolidate LTLs into a full truckload? That's, um, that decision really largely depends on the volume of freight, the distance it's going, and just the availability of carriers. If you consistently have multiple LTL shipments heading to, to the similar destination, it's obviously worth analyzing the total cost and considering the full truckload. Yeah, and, and what are some of the key operational differences when we look at, at that LTL versus full truckload, and, and what should businesses be aware of during these high demand periods? Yeah, it's like you said, with LTL, you're actually dealing with multiple touch points, meaning your freight is loaded and unloaded several times, which can increase the risk of damage and delays. On the other hand, full truckload moves freight directly from origin to destination with fewer stops, so offering better protection and most of the time, faster transit times. Another difference is the lead time. LTL shipments often require more flexibility, while full truckload typically provides more control over scheduling. Yeah, and you bring up a good point there. When we're talking about uh, these must arrive by dates, we're, we're really talking about retailer compliance and, and quality control. You know, what are some of the common challenges you face in, in meeting these retail specific compliance regulations, you know, especially during this period? I think one of the biggest challenges is just the complexity of the different retailers' compliance requirements. Each retailer can have a unique expectation for how freight is packaged, labeled, or even delivered. So during peak season with increased volumes, even a small oversight, such as missing label or improper packaging, can lead to non-compliance charges or even a refused shipment. So another challenge is coordinating on-time deliveries when available carrier capacity is limited. Managing this generally requires strong communication and visibility into your supply chain. Yeah, absolutely. And for us on, on the truckload side, you know, we look at lead times as a really a key metric for us for that uh, quality control. The more lead time we're able to get on our end, the better we can plan that capacity and make sure that we align the delivery schedule with the receiver to meet those must arrive by dates. Um, so for you on the LTL side, how do you ensure quality control and on time delivery when facing a high volume? Um, the key is just really preparation and flexibility. So quality control starts before the shipment even leaves the warehouse. With a clear checklist to ensure the products are packaged according to the retailer specifications that we spoke of, this helps minimize the last minute issues and costly returns. So for on-time delivery, using real-time data and shipment tracking can give you better visibility. This will help you avoid some delays. It's also crucial to build a strong relationship with carriers to ensure that you have capacity when demand spikes. So having that backup plan for high demand periods like engaging additional carriers or switching to different modes of transportation, such as your LTL, the full truckload consolidation. This can ensure timely deliveries despite the rush. So ultimately, overcoming these challenges comes to anticipating bottlenecks. Yeah, you bring up a good point about real-time data and, and, and shipment tracking. You know, for us on the truckload side, that, that goes past just the location and the ETA of the driver. It, it's it's really, you know, who the driver is, who the carrier is that we've selected for this shipment. You know, as we look at, at, at business practices for risk management and contingency planning, we obviously want to be in lockstep with a shipper to understand who we've got selected for this shipment to prevent things like fraud uh, in the market. Is Obviously, that's been a big topic of discussion this year. Uh, but for you on the LTL side, when we talk about this contingency planning and risk management, what are some of the biggest risks you prepare for during peak season? And how do you build contingency plans, plans around these risks? Yeah, one of the biggest risks for LTL would be just capacity constraints. So with higher shipment volumes, finding available carriers becomes tougher and some of the rates can spike. Um, to mitigate this, you should build contingency plans by securing backup carriers and also diversify your transportation modes, again, like shifting LT full truckload or even utilizing air freight when it's necessary. Another common risk is your operational bottlenecks. 
a um, small delay can generally ripple through the supply chain. So build flexibility into your schedule, allow for those buffers. Yeah, and, and the other thing that we need to look out for in, in Q4 is, is really weather delays, right? We've got winter weather upon us, or at least coming to just started fall here, but uh, we'll be looking at potentially icy road conditions and, and roads being sometimes closed and causing delays. Um, how do you keep our operations flexible and adaptable in the face of unexpected disruptions like weather? So we're looking at flexibility and adaptability d during those disruptions. Um, we're going to rely heavily upon the real-time data and proactive planning. So this starts with constant monitoring of those weather patterns, traffic conditions, and just our carrier performance so we can anticipate potential disruptions before they actually happen. When a disruption is imminent, we quickly pivot by adjusting our routes or carriers. For example, if you have severe weather and it's affecting a certain region, we can reroute those shipments to avoid delays or even shift the freight to a different mode of transportation. We also ensure flexibility by building strong partnerships with our carriers. So by having a diverse network of carriers, you can leverage some of those backup options when primary carriers are at capacity or delayed. Um, again, clear communication channels are really the key. Our teams are trained to act fast and we have well-defined protocols for handling disruptions. Whether it's rerouting your shipment, adjusting schedules, or maybe even negotiating alternative capacity, we can make those real-time decisions to keep operations running smoothly. Yeah, and you bring up a good topic there because it's the same thing for us on the full truckload side. You know, communication is, is above all else probably the most important aspect of, of navigating through these time periods, especially when you have weather adding into the already surging volumes and disruptions that we're going to face. Uh, you know, for us on, on the truckload side, some of our best practices to your point is not only clear communication, but quick communication. The, the quicker we can get everybody on the same page and all stakeholders involved uh, aligned with what's taking place place, we can then adjust our strategies and our approach. So uh, for you on the LTL side, what are some of the best practices your team follows to ensure clear communication uh, with customers and stakeholders? We just maintain proactive communication. So we don't wait for problems to arise before we actually communicate it. We'll provide those regular updates on shipment status, any potential delays we may see coming, and any other issues that might impact the service. This way, our customers are always informed and feel confident knowing that we're actively managing their shipments. Yeah, and at the end of the day, it's logistics. We understand there's going to be disruptions. We understand things aren't always going to go to plan. Uh, so how do you maintain customer satisfaction when, when facing some of these operational challenges? The key, I think, is just to be honest and transparent. If there's a delay, we let our customers know as soon as possible, and then we'll provide a clear action plan. So this can include alternative delivery options, maybe even adjust some timelines or even cost saving solutions like consolidating shipments. We also focus on actual problem solving rather than just reporting issues. For example, if capacity constraints are slowing down shipments, we'll proactively offer alternatives such as using a different carrier or rerouting their freight. By keeping the customer in the loop and offering solutions, we not only just mitigate the problem, but also show that we're committed to their success. Well, I appreciate that, Amber. Uh, that, that wraps us up for today's webinar. Amber, thank you so much for your time. Audience, thanks so much for tuning in. Um, you know, we got the opportunity today to touch on a few key points, you know, understanding demand fluctuations, understanding how to prepare for those forecasted demands, you know, the importance of communication and flexibility on both sides, whether it's full truckload or LTL. And ultimately, it's all about that risk mitigation and retail compliance. Uh, you can reach out to any of us here at Freight Plus on our website, www.freightplus.io, uh, as well as the links below to Amber and I's email. Appreciate everyone's time and hope everyone has a great rest your week. Thank you.